Hello everyone, we're going to go over a few things with my current core set update which will be released today. For starters, I'm going to go over one of the most basic principles that everybody should have familiarity with. Then simply add in my core set for use with Hashi2. Typically, once you open up Hashi2 and you go to this tab right here which says modules, install, extra, or uninstall extra, you can see exactly which HMODs are pretty much implemented for use with Hashi2. These are the ones that come with the Hashi2 CE Community Edition by Team Shinkansen. You have Extra Space Hack, Password Protection Hack, Music Hack, No Thumbnails Hack, and SNES Filters Hack. And one thing I'd like to note is uh, some HMODs will not work properly with USB hosts. So if you have issues with any of these HMODs with USB hosts, just uninstall them and you should be fine again. But... No thumbnails hack, for instance, has caused a few people to report C8 issues. But all of these run fine on non-USB hosts, so just keep that in mind. But I'm going to go into my current core set update. For 3.22.18, and once they're all extracted to this folder here, I would merely copy and paste the entire set from these four folders down. And you do not need to necessarily copy the extras folder. The extras folder is exactly what it says. A bunch of extras that I put together. And I have covered videos on all of these as well as done uh, release information on all of these. You can go through and check these folders out. And there's a lot of goodies mixed in with these folders. And my previous videos go over all of them. Feel free to ask questions as always. But I'm copying the main gist of my core set from the four folders down. Main custom bios all the way down. I'm going to go into the Hashi2CE Community Edition folder, into User Mods folder, and I'm going to just simply copy and paste my entire set there. And I would recommend replacing the ones in there with my current set from today because you're going to see them show up in a very different way once you open up the Modules tab. So here we go. They're all properly copied over. Modules, Install Extra Modules. My core set is now going to be categorized under k Manic Experimental Core Set right down the line. And you can of course go to the right and look at the little readmes in the boxes to see what each of them does. Right here is KM NX Engine with the date 8517. Majo adds support for Cave Story Game Engine. And then it uh, of course shows the command line that you need for each game. Here would be bin forward slash NX Engine. So you can go through all of these just like so. And if you want a little brief uh, summary of all the command lines you would need for each of these, I'll show you this real quick. You go into the extras folder, commands folder, and right here are all the cores with each of their appropriate command lines all the way down the line. If you want to run KM Atari 800, you can use bin forward slash A52 or bin forward slash Atari 800. So pay very close attention to all of these for anything you're having little issues running. But uh, now then, we're going to switch over to USB host, and I'm going to go over one of the other factors with today's core set update. So I'm booting into USB host. And we have the classic Mad Monkey Hashi logo. The guy who did the excellent, excellent job of getting USB hosts going. We're all having fun with that now. You can run pretty much anything you can imagine on USB host. Okay, we're booted in. Now one of the other things that I'm going to go over is uh, yet another performance upgrade. And I'm going to start doing this in the near future. As you guys and gals request various games for Arcade for me to check out. I will provide performance tweaks to run them better. So today I'm going to go over uh, an example here. And I've done this in a few previous videos here. I'm going to my arcade set. Elevator Action Returns. With MAME 2003, when you load it, it will automatically trigger the tweak. Just watch. What used to run really slow and have awful music 
is now going to automatically load with a performance tweak and run phenomenally better than it has before. And I was going to go over another detail that uh, I'd like to point out. Sometimes you might notice longer load times when you're trying to load something. I'm going to show you exactly why this happens and how to fix it. But after I do this test, I'll show you that. So typically, if you load this game without the performance tweak, it would run really bad. But I have it auto-load in the performance tweak. The music and frame rate are fine, and the game's running great. As great as it possibly can for right now. And again, any games that you guys and guys want me to check out and personally add tweaks for, just let me know. But Elevator Action Returns is running great. And I'm going to exit back to the main GUI user interface here. And I'm going to go over another game that people were having issues with, which is the Great Outrunners. Normally when you would load it, it would be a real small screen. But I have it set to auto size to a more appropriate aspect ratio. So watch what happens when I load it. And you'll be able to run this with MAME 2003 and it'll auto size appropriately and work right off the bat with a performance tweak. Again, I'm going to show you about the possible low, longer load times and how to fix that issue if you do have that happen. See, it is now a much more durable and optimal screen size. And it is also a performance tweak to run a lot better. Much, much nicer than having a little itty bitty screen size like in my previous video for my test video. Much, much better. So, you Outrun fans can enjoy this in today's update. Without having to do anything extra, just simply load the game in MAME 2003 and you can run it full screen. Now I'm going to exit to the main GUI here. And we're going to go over another game. We're going to go over uh, Demon Front with Final Burn Alpha 2012. Yet another game. I'm going to load the core, which is Final Burn Alpha 2012. Always load the core first. Then I'm going to load the content. Go into my dummy folder. And this will auto load a performance upgrade for this as well. If you load uh, Demon Front A, B, or PCB, whichever ones work. And you'll have an appropriate frame rate and fine sound. And again, feel free to request any games that you'd like to see me tweak to run better. And it's running absolutely fine right now. And then uh, somebody was, uh, else was asking me about Alien Storm. It doesn't run on MAME 2003, but it runs on MAME 2010. I'm going to go over that real quick. Here we have Alien Storm. And it has uh, encryption issues on MAME 2003, but you can run it fine on MAME 2010. So we're in game.
So it runs fine in May of 2010. In May of 2003, you're unable to insert coins or start the game. It doesn't work out properly, but it runs great in May of 2010, where the encryption is not an issue. Now, uh, a few people have reported they've been uh, very happy with some of the very, very obscure games that I've been going over. So I'm going to do one quick obscure game here for PlayStation 1. We're going to do Chipoki Ralph No Daibuken. And this is on the PlayStation Network in Japan, but not in the United States. This is a phenomenal game to definitely check out. And if you want a platformer game that's going to kick your butt, this is a great one to check out. And I've done a brief little playthrough of this in one of my previous videos, but this is going to be the obscure game of the day to check out. And every time I do a video, I'm going to try to bring up one obscure game to show you guys and gals to check out. And after I do this little uh, play here, I'm going to show you how to fix this low loaded issue, which a lot of people are having. Here, I'm, all, I'm trying to push the select button since I was just playing a bunch of arcade games in a row. But this game, appearances are very deceiving. It is a very cutesy type platformer, but the challenge level is literally a 9 out of 10. It is probably one of the most difficult games you could ever play. That's how quick you can die in this game. But if you're a Wonder Boy fan, or just a general hack and slash platformer fan, you're gonna love this game. And it, it gets much, much more difficult as you go through the game. I'd actually love to see them do this with the Little Nemo game. Do like a Little Nemo update with this style of gameplay. That'd be phenomenal. But we're going to switch back over to the computer and I'm going to show you how to deal with your slow loading issue if you tend to have that issue and I'm going to explain why it happens. Okay, now that I have my USB host flash drive plugged back into the computer, what most people tend to do, and give me a second while I get the screen back on, they tend to just yank the flash drive to and from the computer and the NES. The problem with that is that it is very, very sensitive and games will tend to load longer because of that. So every once in a while, you're going to want to have it in your computer, right click on the drive, go to properties, tools, Error checking, this option will check the drive for errors. Automatically fix file system errors. And I'm going to let it run a little quick scan there. And I yank the drive so often that I consistently have issues and end up getting longer load times. And doing this is a tremendous help in fixing the longer load times. Usually it'll find an issue because I yank the drive without safely removing it from the computer. See, this time, no problems were found, but I tend to have problems show up on her from yanking it too often. 